Hey, well, thank you. Thank you for that. I swear I didn't pay him for that, but I might pay you after. I'll pay you commission. Hey, everybody. Joel Lance here, and today we're at Bobby, 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 Bobby Hebert's. Uh, named after like the football player, uh, Ca the Bobby Hebert's Cajun Cannon. So here we are to do their burger challenge. So their Cajun Cannon burger challenge. There's a seven patty burger, uh, all half pound patties. Then there's three shrimp on top and you have a order of their Cajun fries, which have like a cream sauce on it, um, like a mushroom cream sauce. And then there's like crawfish and cheese and all that interesting stuff. So we're gonna have 30 minutes to do it. Uh, that's about it. Let's head on in, have some fun, eat some food. Hi everyone, so here are the challenges. Mine's fallen over, so I'm just gonna put it on its side. Um, but yeah, it looks really good. Lots of burgers, no shortage there. Is there a, do you know if there's a record? Do you know there's a record? Like, what's the fastest somebody ever does? I'm kind of moving. I'm gonna take this out of my head in like 12 minutes. And then they ate all the dessert and the shot after. Oh, God. You're feeling it, right? Eh? Yeah. All right. Not that I'm for 12 minutes. Okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna have 30 minutes. Uh, so we'll get started here in just a moment. Um, timer starts when we take our first bite. These shrimps look really good. Big old shrimps. There's also shrimp on. All right. Well, let's might as well get her going. Right now, ready to rock? Yeah. All right. So let's get started. We'll say count of. Five, four, three, two, one. Cheers. Hey everyone, welcome to this video where today we're at Bobby Hebert's in Metairie, basically New Orleans, Louisiana. So this is a very well-known food challenge in the area, being New Orleans doesn't offer that many food challenges, and of them that it does offer, the two most notable, most uh, distinguishable, and the ones that have definitely probably been around the longest as well, would be this one, the Bobby Hebert's, and then also the uh, pancake challenge at the Oceana Grill. So very excited to be able to come and do this challenge. It was one I've been wanting to do for quite a while, actually. Um, I saw Randy Santel do this years ago. I'm talking probably like 2015, um, maybe even, we'll, we'll say 2015. And ever since then, I said, hey, I want to try that too. Um, there have been a number of attempts over the years. The lady... Our server, as you heard, she thought the record was about 12 minutes, but I'm sure it was a lot less. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure I've seen somebody, may, maybe it was my friend Darren Eats do this in maybe like five or six minutes before. So I think that was the actual record. At the time, I was not um, sure of that. I thought it was more along the lines of 12 minutes. Uh, that being said, um, we'll talk about the burger. So the burger itself was a good burger. Um, I like a medium rare to medium burger like a medium burger is really nicely um, a medium rare burger is also usually good depending on the thickness of the patty um, but these had some pretty thick patties and this burger was very very rare for my tasting um, in fact I would literally say this burger was rare um, so definitely a little bit on the rare side to my preference but the seasoning was quite nice it's a pretty tasty burger nice and juicy The burger, uh, my burger, it, when it came out actually, um, I asked for a new plate because there was so much burger juice in the bottom, like literally like a whole half a centimeter or like a half an inch, quarter of an inch of just pure juice um, because it was so rare, like the juices, uh, and this was not just, you know, we'll say fat, it was literally still the burger moisture, the red juices, etc. So like I said, it was definitely a little bit rare for my preference, but nonetheless, I have no complaints about that. Um, the buns on the bottom also as well, like totally was basically flattened, disintegrated because of all that extra moisture, all that extra juice. But like I said, pretty straightforward. The burger, seven patties, three and a half pounds of meat, and lots of cheese. You wanted the fries, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna reach you some fries. Very juicy bottom bun. There was the few shrimp on the burger as well, and then when it came to the fries, you did not have to have the uh, kind of that mushroom rom romelade, whatever sauce they call on that, that cream sauce on the fries. And in fact, I actually asked for the fries um, to have that 
because it was totally optional. They're like, do you want it? I'm like, no, but if you put it on the side, I'll take a little bit on the side just to try it. Um, to which they obviously, a little bit of miscommunication, we ended up with the sauce on my fries, which was okay. Um, you know, I figured it would be nonetheless, uh, although I'm not the biggest kind of cheesy person in general, but I mean, hey, it had crawfish, it had cheese, it had mushrooms, how bad could it be? Three minutes, 40 seconds in, going pretty well. For this challenge, I was definitely kind of lacking in energy. This was the second challenge of the day. I had just done a challenge prior to this, and I tell you what, I was very, very much feeling it. I was very full, and I was finding this uh, challenge quite difficult to eat just because I was so full, um, but I wanted to get through it. I knew we had 30 minutes to do it, and I was confident, at least hopingly confident, that I would be able to do it in the 30 minutes, but I was not sure how long ultimately it would take me. We have their Cajun fries. I'm just going to use my hand. If you complete the challenge, you do get the meal for free, and you also do get a sweet t shirt. Um, so that was ultimately the goal, and if not, I believe the challenge was $40, 40 45 35 about $40 roughly. Um, so yeah, ultimately these cheese fries, they weren't bad. Um, they, again, were just a basic french fry, which was fine. Um, I liked the cream sauce-ish aspect. It was um, very, very, very rich. Uh, kind of reminded me of like a cream of mushroom soup. Um, however, then we had like, again, the added cheese. Um, the crawfish in there added a little bit of flavor, maybe a little bit of a Cajun kind of flair to it. So kind of like a mushroom soup with a Cajun flair with the cheese. So, you know, it, like I said, it was pretty good overall. It was pretty interesting. It was definitely an interesting taste. And like I said, I know this sauce or a similar sauce, um, the name is slipping my mind, Ramelade, Rumalad, whatever it is. It's pretty common kind of sauce in this Cajun in this Creole um, kind of cuisine and this cooking, you know, New Orleans area. Definitely a sauce that you would see served with a number of different items, um, whether for dipping or um, items drenched in it. It's kind of like I said, it's a kind of, I don't know, it's a New Orleans area kind of thing, which I mean, how can you go wrong? Kind of a creamy sauce, kind of like, like kind of cream of mushroom in this case, but creamy sauce with other seafood or different flavors and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, what's wrong with that, right? Um, but I think that's all the information I have for you today. So I'll let you get to the rest of the video and uh, let's see what happens. <coughs> Are we done? About six, uh, six and a half minutes, something like that. Pretty tasty, enjoyed the burger. Fries are very interesting, Cajun fries, had nice cream sauce on them, some crawfish in there. Serena's just finished up, doing real well, and uh, we'll hopefully we'll get the win.
like nine-ish minutes. She's over nine minutes. <coughs> For Raina, of course you have your times on screen. So, huge thanks to Bobby Heberts. Heberts, yeah. Heberts, Cajun Cannon. Really enjoyed the food, good challenge. Uh, very reasonable here in Metairie, Louisiana, just inside New Orleans. So, Raina, what do you think? It was very delicious. It tastes like chili cheeseburgers. Yeah, it was the, well, see, the burgers just had, had a bit of seasoning in them. I don't yeah. know chili cheese, but something. So, everybody, yeah, until next time, of course, happy day. Happy, happy, hungry, happy eating. You know what to do. Don't do what we do. Get yourself some food. Have a lovely life and a lovely day. And body some food. Peace. like a castle. It's probably the like, I don't know, old French or Spanish influence into the architecture because that's pretty unique look. Interestingly enough, this fountain is here because during the Spanish Domain of Baton Rouge, Independent or uh, Repentance Street ran through this area, and it was named that because the convicted criminals would walk along their way to receive their sentencing at the Commandant's House, which is now where the old state capitol stands. What's the old state capitol is there? Another view of the old state capitol. Very, very interesting looking. Did some maintenance there. Here we have a great big arch of some sort, which is very unique looking. I don't really know exactly what it is or what it's supposed to be, but pretty cool. Right by the old state capitol. Then we have this, this fountain, which I'm not sure exactly what it is. That's a guy's face right by the old state capitol. And there we have another person's face with a couple other faces. Very interesting. And down here at Riverside Rest Wild Park, dedicated to Louisiana veterans of all wars. Uh, it's very interesting, like it's just like kind of a, a relaxing, you know, green space. What's well, really funny and a lot of people might not realize so this is a leaf from one of the trees and it's very waxy it's very thick like it's very it's quite hard to rip and this is just like a tree of the south that have these thick waxy leaves and why they have to have that is because they need the to protection from the heat whereas you go up in Canada or real northern states the trees aren't having such thick and waxy leaves it's very uh, they're a lot softer more um, delicate because they don't have the same heat they have to struggle with. So there goes your lesson for the day. Hi everybody, we're down here on the Mississippi River. It's very beautiful, I'm gonna show you. I just dropped my camera and I cracked the casing on it. I thought it was absolutely toast. It appears to still be working. So I hope that this is actually working and I guess we'll have to be probably upgrading my camera a little earlier at some point, but I will say I'm lucky that when it fell, it wasn't on the front so I didn't crack the lens, but my camera casing is cracked. Obviously I can't really show you because it's on the camera, but anyway, here's the Mississippi River. Which we are a day before the uh, hurricane and our storm, so we're kind of a good time to be here. Got a great big bridge. Got a little dock down there, got a boat down there as well. But uh, yeah, so very beautiful. That is the Port of Baton Rouge over there. I don't know if you can see the sign. Port of Baton Rouge. 
and yeah, Mississippi River. So it's really cool. This is right on the basically downtown or old downtown of Baton Rouge. But yeah, pretty cool. And I'm very thankful my camera at least now appears to be working. So fingers crossed everybody. Otherwise that will put a bit of change in our plans. So thank you. Thank you. Then we have this thing, which is pretty cool. It's like a casing around a ball. There we are. There we are again. Yeah, and right by the water here. And what's called, oh, it says, what does this say? Probably Rouge, Baton, is this? Yeah, Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge, big letters. And along the river here, we have this little port, port pier. Not, not, it's not a port, not a pier. It's like a, I don't know, an, in, an outlet. Um, but look, you can see where the water has risen up and the trees have gotten stuck. These are all like trees where you're right here. Those are all trees on like the uh, pathway. So it's kind of messed up at the moment, damaged by trees and water, but it kind of goes to show. And then here, I guess you probably consider this a levee. So over here, when the levee breaks, hopefully it doesn't happen here tomorrow. Here we have the USS Kid, which is a battleship docked in, I imagine this would be its retire, but in uh, Baton Rouge here. And we go out on this thingy thing. And over here you also have some more fountains. You have your flags. We have another monument of some sort. And right there is what they call the River Center, Baton Rouge. Pretty cool. And here we are out on the outlet thingy thing. There's the battleship again from a different angle. There over there looks like a great big kind of old steamboat thing. And again, obviously the water, not drop my camera again, especially down to the water, but there's the Mississippi River. And all the things around. Pretty cool. And here's this thing. So it's a Purple Heart ship. So on December 7th, 2018, the Honorable Sharon Weston Boom, Mayor, President, City Parish of East Baton Rouge in cooperation with the Louisiana National or Naval War Memorial Commission and the Military Order of the Purple Heart Red Stick Chapter declared the Fetcher Class Destroyer USS Kid moored as a living museum in the downtown Baton Rouge as a Purple Heart ship. So the Purple Heart Trail was established in 1992 by the Military Order of the Purple Heart and created symbolic to honor systems of roads highways, bridges, and other monuments throughout the 50 states and U.S. territories to commemorate and honor all men and women who have been wounded or killed in combat while serving in the United States Armed Forces. The trail originates in Mount Vernon, Virginia, which is the burial location of George Washington. Purple Heart Medal is say, specifically a combat declaration and is our nation's oldest military medal and is the first created by General George Washington in 1782 and was known as the Badge of Military Merit. Purple Heart Medal is only awarded to members of the Armed Forces of the United States who have either been wounded or killed in action by an enemy of the United States. On April 11th, 1945, so this will be the Second World War, um, the USS Kidd was struck by Japanese kamikaze aircrafts while on radar picket duty 90 miles east of Okinawa. This attack resulted in the deaths of 70, or sorry, 38 of her crew and wounded 55 more. Several more crewmen were known to have been wounded but did not report their injuries, considering them minor compared to those who are already suffered by their shipmates. So this is from Pearl Harbor, basically. The USS Kidd. Pretty cool. And there's the USS Kidd, so the battleship. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And here we are by the Memorial Museum. And we have a number of different war monuments. And here we have the complete war memorial. This is very large. This goes all the way back to the Revolutionary War. That's impressive. So like we're talking 1700s, War of 1812, Mexican War, uh, continued war between the states. That's interesting. War with Spain, World War One, 
World War One. we have World War Two, which is giant, oh my gosh. World War Two goes all the way from, where's my finger, hold on. World War Two goes all the way from right there, let's try that one, to all the way to right there, there it starts the Korean War. And the Korean War, Vietnam War, Vietnam War, that was, wow, that was a lot of casualties too. Uh, Lebanon, and then the war against terrorism, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, September 11th, and yeah, then a few others, individuals. This is pretty, pretty shocking, pretty crazy again. Always a very emotional place here at the War Memorial. Um, I do not know the dignity of their birth, but I do know the glory of their death. They died unquestioning, uncomplaining, with faith in their hearts and on their lips, the hope that we could go on to victory, always for them. Duty, honor, country. General Douglas MacArthur. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. Also, I want you to join the Happy Healthy Hungry Family. That's right, guys. Hit that subscribe button right there. Hit that little thing that looks like my face. And then I picked two videos out specifically for you. That's right. I picked out two videos just for you. I know you're going to like them. So real quick, hit one of these right here. This video is going to go away in a couple seconds. So please hit them. Three, two, one. Click one. Let's go.